Hi XR developers, in today's video we're going to look at the scene API. We already looked at the Mixed Reality Utility Kit, or MRUK for short, and saw how we can create scene models and use their information for our applications. I talked about how MRUK is a replacement for the OVR Scene Manager, which is part of the scene API. However, I still want to show you how to use the OVR Scene Manager because it lets us create more flexible and advanced Mixed Reality experiences. If you like this type of content, Please take a second to like and subscribe to this channel. If you want to get access to the source code of this project, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. If you have any questions, feel free to join our growing XR developer community on Discord. And now, let's get started with MetaScene API. To get started, we import the MetaXR SDK. For this tutorial, we will only need the core package. After that is installed, we make sure that we switch our project to the Android platform in the build settings. We then open the project setup tool and apply all suggested changes and fixes to make our project ready to be deployed to a MetaQuest device. Also, apply all the changes to the Windows platform, which is relevant for us, if we test our game in the editor. We can then go ahead and search for the OVR camera rig and drag it into our scene. Make sure you check Quest 3 under Target Devices if you are using a MetaQuest 3. We then go all the way down and add an OVR pass-through layer which we set to underlay. For more information about pass-through mode, check out my in-depth tutorial about it here. To use the pass-through mode, we need to make sure to check the pass-through support and also enable the so-called insight pass-through. We can then search for the OVR scene manager and add it to our scene as well. To use our scene model in our applications, we also need to make sure to check the scene support on our OVR manager component. If we made a scan of our room already, we can actually visualize it directly in our editor. For this, we look for the plane mesh as well as the volume prefab and add them to our OVR scene manager. The OVR scene model loader is responsible for loading the room scan from our MetaQuest device. If no model exists, it will try to run space setup once to define the model. The OVR scene manager will then apply the prefabs to our planes and furniture. We can also initiate a scene capture directly in code by calling OVR scene manager dot request scene capture. Very importantly for pass through is that you will need to find your main camera in the scene, which is most likely on the center eye anchor below tracking space inside the OVR camera rig and change the camera background from skybox to solid color. As you can see, we can now observe our real room in pass through mode and the OVR scene manager is overlaying the plane and volume mesh that are part of the prefabs we assigned in the inspector. However, it would be nicer if we only see our room and not this blue mesh with the pivots. Also, it would be cool if we can bounce something off our walls. First, let me show you another way of setting up our OVR scene manager. We can remove our game objects and set everything up with the meta building blocks. We add a camera rig, a pass through and a room model building block to our scene. We now have an identical setup to before. Additionally, we add our ball spawner script from our previous tutorial that lets us shoot spheres into our room. Perfect. Let's now make our meshes invisible and add colliders to bounce off our spheres. On the plane mesh, we disable the mesh renderer and add a new child object and call it collider. Here we add a collider and reduce its size on the Z axis. For the volume, we also want to disable the mesh renderer and then simply add a box collider to the same game object. We can also disable the pivots that indicate the center of each anchor on our prefabs. Let's now play the scene. As you can see, we can now see our room normally through the cameras and shoot our spheres, which accurately bounce off our furniture and walls. Amazing guys, let's quickly look at what else we can do on the OVR scene manager. One last thing on the scene manager that I want to show you is the prefab override. We can add a new item and then select which spatial anchor type, or in other words, which plane or piece of furniture we would like to replace with an alternative prefab. To visualize this, let's just select floor and create a simple prefab for it. Let's duplicate our plane mesh prefab and change the material to a random color to better visualize our change. We can then drag the object into our project to turn it into a prefab. We then remove it from the hierarchy and assign the prefab to the prefab override. If we now play the scene, we can see that only our floor has been replaced by this new blue plane. 
Now, I'm unfortunately not an artist, but this opens great possibilities to turn our real room into a realistic game level. As you might have seen, we do have an OVR scene anchor component on each of our prefabs. This is necessary to persistently anchor the position of our walls and furniture inside our room model. Let's look at a couple of use cases for this new room model. To detect where our anchors are and what labels they have, I would like to create a new script called get anchor labels. First, we declare a line renderer component to allow us to assign it in the Unity editor for visual feedback. Then in the update method, we continuously check for input by casting a ray from the right touch controller's position and direction. If this ray hits an object, we use the hit information to either identify if the object has an OVR semantic classification component, indicating it's an anchor with labels, and print those labels, or simply mark the hit location. The line renderer visually represents this ray, adjusting its start and end points based on whether an anchor is hit or not. Let's add this script to an empty game object. We add a line renderer and adjust its material and thickness. Lastly, we assign the line renderer to our new component and give it a go. Fantastic. We can see now that our ray cast always snaps to the center of whatever anchor we are hovering over. Also, in our console, you can see that we get the labels of the current anchor we are selecting with our ray cast. If we open up an anchor in the hierarchy, we see that they all got a OVR semantic classification component that contains the label information. Now, this is how we set up our OVR scene manager, display our anchors, and read information from them. Let's discover some more use cases for the OVR scene manager. Maybe we are working on a mixed reality game, and we want to spawn objects on our scene. This works just like placing objects on any other surface. Let me show you how by opening my simple prefab placer script. We want a prefab that we are going to place and a preview prefab that shows whenever we are hovering over a surface, sort of like a debug view. We also save the current preview prefab in a separate variable. In the start method, we set the current preview to the preview prefab we assign in the inspector later. Then, in each frame update, we cast a ray from the controller's position in its forward direction. If the ray hits something, it updates the preview object's position and rotation to match the hit point and normal. Pressing button 1 instantiates the prefab at the hit location without affecting the preview's visibility. This is just a very simple script to position a prefab while showing a debug prefab to mark where our array is pointing at. Awesome. Now let's set it up in our scene. You can use any prefab that you want for this. I got a model of a Pokemon and turned it into a prefab. You can find the link in the description. You can find a normal one and a shiny one. Let's assign them in the inspector and give this a try. Fantastic guys. As you can see, we visualize one prefab to show our pointer and the other one gets placed as soon as we press our button. Feel free to play around with this yourself. You can add sounds, animations, or even shadow and lights. You can even add environment occlusion with Meta's depth API. If you're not sure how to do that, watch my video about it here. Amazing guys. Before we close off this lesson, let's look at another, more advanced use case. I would like to show you how to access more scene data. For this, let's create a script called Distance to Wall Visualizer. As the name suggests, I would like to extract the necessary information from our room model to be able to calculate the distance of our player to the wall. In this case, we will just take the right controller as an example. First, we want to have a variable where we can assign a text component to visualize our distance. We then define three private variables, the OVR scene manager, an OVR scene room, that gets created at runtime by the OVR scene manager, and an array of OVR scene planes representing each wall in our room. In the awake method, we first fetch the OVR scene manager of our scene and then subscribe to its event, which is called as soon as our scene model is successfully loaded from our device. Once loaded, we call the scene loaded method. In there, we fetch the OVR scene room component that has been created at runtime, and we get all the walls of the rooms and save them in our OVR scene plane array to access them later. In the update method, we check if there is an OVR scene room component. 
If so, we continue with our logic by getting the position of our right controller using the OVR input. We then want to find the nearest wall to our controller, and therefore we call a new method called find nearest wall, and give our controller position as a parameter. In this method, we declare two new local variables called nearest wall and nearest distance. We then iterate over all the walls in our array. By using each wall and our controller position, we compare each distance by calling a new method called calculate distance to plane. The calculate distance to plane method is responsible for determining the shortest distance between a specified position and a plane. The method first extracts the normal vector of the plane's surface using wall.transform.forward. This vector describes the direction perpendicular to the plane, indicating which way the plane is facing. It then calculates the distance from the world origin to the plane along the direction of its normal vector. This is done using the dot product between the wall's normal vector and the wall's position, with a negative sign applied to ensure a positive distance value. To find the shortest distance between the specified position and the plane, the method computes the absolute value of the dot product between the plane's normal vector and the given position. It then adds the previously calculated wall distance to this value. Finally, it divides the result by the magnitude of the plane's normal vector. The outcome of this calculation represents the shortest distance from the position to the plane's surface. Fantastic, guys. Lastly, we want to call this method again in the update method to continuously show the distance on our text component. Let's now set everything up in our scene. Firstly, let's assign our script, and then we want to fix some text to our camera. For this, we go to the main camera and add a text mesh pro text element. We set the canvas to world space and scale it down. We then also scale down our text and position it correctly on our canvas. Lastly, let's assign this text to our script and give it a go. As you can see, we now get the accurate distance to each wall, no matter where we are in the room. The script automatically detects the next nearest wall and updates the distance accordingly. Fantastic guys, now it is your turn to create amazing mixed reality experiences using various features from the MetaPresence platform. Check out my previous videos to combine multiple exciting features together into one immersive experience. Amazing guys, and that's it. I hope you learned a lot. And if you like this type of videos, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to this channel. Consider supporting me on Patreon to get access to all the source code or join our growing XR developer community on Discord if you have any questions. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.